So not only do I have the whiteboard now and the color diagram, got myself a little toggle switch. So this is gonna be my bypass switch for the key, so I don't have to keep jumping wires, it's just gonna be cleaner, uh, less of a hazard when I'm going to test it. Uh, basically, I have to go through this entire loom part by part to make sure I can verify the starting circuit is actually all working. I think there's a couple things that are working against me. Uh, I still haven't looked at the starting solenoid. I still haven't even looked at the clutch switch. And I have no idea if this thing is even in neutral. So. There's a bunch of things that you need to do in order to start a motorcycle that I didn't really even try last time. So, I'm going to go through those one by one, mark them on this beautiful whiteboard, and hopefully we can make some progress. Step one, I'm going to be installing this switch in here somewhere. I'm not going to be using this ignition switch anymore because I'm going to be getting a different key. And I'm hoping that when I do, it'll come with a different plug. So I'm just going to snip this guy off, plug it in, and go to town. So the time lapse was completely out of frame, but got my switch in, got it nice and soldered, it's not going anywhere, and heat shrink, so it's not going to short out on anything. So it's got on off, boom. <clears throat> the starting circuit on this model consists of starting motor, starter relay starter cutout relay and the starting circuit cut off relay. If the engine stop switch and the main switch are both on, the starter motor can operate if A, the transmission is in neutral, so the neutral switch, or B, the clutch lever is pulled into the handlebar and the side stand is up. So that's the clutch switch and the side stand switch. So let's go with the least amount of variables here. Make sure this thing is in neutral, turn on all the switches, and we'll see. Battery's in. Is it neutral? Uh, let's see. Seems to be, unless there's no chain on there, but should be in neutral. So it's been in neutral this whole time, so I don't think this is going to work. But switch. I don't know if that did anything. Here's our main switch dangling up here. Oh, we got brake lights. And so it should be on. And this should be this, the, the go button right here. Actually, that doesn't do anything. Oil level switch is coming on, although I don't have my neutral light. So it could be this light busted or the neutral switch ain't working. Let's find out. So this is how I'm going to check the neutral light. We know whenever I touch this guy, this button right here, this is the start button. The low oil light comes on. So I'm going to switch that light for the neutral light and see if it makes any difference. I switch the lights, hit the button, still doesn't work. So both of these bulbs are good because I put this one in there, that one in there. So I don't have the neutral switch. Time to dig into that. And there it is, underneath the crankcase cover on the right hand side. Here we 
are. And look how clean it is down here. In fact, it isn't clean at all. There's your switch. Right in there. So, gotta pull that guy out and... I don't know. Look at it. All right, well, here's the lead wire for it. Looks like I uh, broke it a little bit, but I'll fix it later. Um, I can at least test to see if there's 12 volts getting to this. And if there's 12 volts getting to this, and that means our switch doesn't work, or there's something inside that isn't pressing down the switch. So, we'll see. Like, oh yeah, yep. So, the switch is all screwed up. That's fun. Guess I can take it apart and look at it. Yeah. So, here's our neutral switch. Come on, focus. Yeah. Sounds kind of crunchy. So maybe we'll clean that out and then check continuity across it. It should just be positive at the top and I think it just grounds through the case. We'll see. Alright, got some alligator clips here. Still continuity. Yeah, all right, so let's see. Nothing for us there. Nothing on that. Touch the switch in. Yeah, something. Yeah, whatever it is is intermittent. So this thing might be just, this thing might be faulty. I'm actually wondering if I can just totally jump the circuit out and see if I'll get number one the neutral switch, number two if I can get the thing to scoot over. Now I just drained all the oil out of it, but we'll see if it works. Let's get this guy back on there so we at least know which lights we're looking at. I have the switch positive with this alligator clip led up to this screw. I checked this screw for continuity, so this is ground. Basically, this is acting as the switch, this little yellow wire here. So, we grab a hold of our little bypass switch here, flick it on. Oh my God, we have neutral. Okay, so. What's this, come on, turn it off. Um, and this button does Still nothing. We're getting close. We have a bad neutral switch. Bad. All right, let's keep digging into this. <clears throat> Install bypass switch, done. Verified devices in starting circuit. We're not doing the clutch switch or the side stand switch today. The neutral switch we think is bad and all the fuses are fine. We're not getting to the solenoid yet because that's still downstream of the relays. So there's our dude. Probably doesn't work. Headlight relay, we know that works because that's what we hear clicking on and off whenever I turn that switch on. Look, yellow, blue, blue, boom. Here's our dude, but it's dirty in there. We gotta see if we even have voltage. Oof, man, these things are... Yeah, at least they're Omrons. That's a good name. Ooh, crusty. I don't like that.
So if we add 12 volts here, you can hear it coming on and off. Beautiful. All right, that's annoying as hell, but it should turn off once I turn this relay on. Yep. All right, so I think the last thing to look at is that actual starter relay itself, like the starter solenoid. Because if you're looking at the engine, it's coming into the starting circuit cutoff relay. Check that. Goes into the starter cutout relay. We check that. Starter relay is the only thing in the path that's also tied to the start switch. And we know the start switch works because we're getting the old low oil light when we turn it on. So, time to pull this bad boy out. Bench test it. Here we are. Doesn't that look like fun? Mmm. I'll tell you enough, I don't like that. Two point four ohms. Alright. That works. Now I'm out of ideas. It's gotta be something else. All right, let's get this guy installed again, and at least we know it works. Well, that's good. We don't need to get another one. You know what? Didn't check these wires. Oh, would you look at that. You know what? I'm mad. I'm mad. You know, I'm used to working backwards from problems. And on this one, I worked forwards. Forwards meaning I worked from the battery to the device instead of working from the device back towards the battery. I'm mad. It's a freaking wire. So, okay. I can fix that. Now let's see if the actual starter works. Uh... Sweet. That worked. It turns over, which means the engine isn't seized. That's good news. I have a loose wire. That's, that's annoying, but that's what you get when you're working on electrical systems. Um, so, need a neutral switch. Need to fix that wire. Within, hopefully, the whole starting electrical system should be fine. Maybe we can start digging into the rest of this guy. Gonna have to get into that fuel tank. Not right now though, that's for next episode.